Just bounce to this. Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Brandon Clements and welcome back to another tutorial here on Glass Hand. So I've had some different requests on uh, some more advanced lighting setups and techniques. Uh, if you haven't seen the previous video that I made about studio lighting, uh, please check that out because we're just going to kind of build on that today. Uh, something that's a little bit more complex and something that's really fun. Uh, one of my favorite albums from uh, the band Daft Punk, Random Access Memories, their album cover artwork is really, really awesome. So I wanted to just try to recreate that uh, here inside of Cinema 4D and Octane and using HDR Light Studio. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the scene and see how we can achieve some pretty complex lighting. Okay, so here we are in our scene, and like I said before, I'm using HDR Light Studio to kind of get the base kind of lighting down. Down. and then I have a group over here that's just called lighting and we, we'll look at this uh, in depth but I just have these illumination planes I have some uh, octane lights and then I have flags which if you aren't uh, familiar with the term flags usually uh, it's just there to like kind of cut and constrict lights literally think of it as something that will block the light and create inter interesting reflections so that's what I'm recreating here and this is the viewport right now and it's kind of a uh, Let's see, let's go ahead and just jump into like another view so we can keep our live viewer looking exactly the same. We'll jump into perspective from our top view. That way we can kind of tumble around and see what everything is doing right here in the scene. Uh, one thing that really irks me, and I'm using R17 right now, is that the reflections uh, with like, you know, your shaders are metallic. You know, the base color will be black so everything looks extremely dark inside the viewport and I really really hate that um, but you know once you have everything set up and the scene is looking correctly then you can go back and do all your lighting and shading okay so a little bit about the geometry here um, so we have Guy um, and Thomas I believe his name is pronounced Tomas but anyways Thomas I say Thomas because I'm American but <laughs> this guy here uh, they're just split up uh, there's no really complex geometry here we're just getting the initial shape and the shape isn't exactly perfect it isn't one-to-one -one. Uh, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on the whole modeling process but I did kind of uh, take this from another file and create what I wanted out of that okay so I modified this and uh, we have everything separated into the shield, the helmet, and then same thing for Guy on the other side, his helmet, his shield. Uh, we also have octane tags here, so we can separate for post and fusion, we can separate these into different layer IDs, and as you see, as I go through them, they have different layer ID numbers. Okay, so this is set up in the render settings to allow us to have multiple passes, and something that we can tweak later uh, gives us a lot of flexibility. So if I just look at this in, uh, sorry, in wireframe, uh, we can see that our camera is a very long focal length, so we can kind of flatten the shape out. So we got an 85 degree, uh, I'm sorry, 85 millimeter focal length to flatten out the image. And I just have up under the composition tag, I have the grid turned on so I can kind of square that up. So just in case you don't use these or never thought about using these, they're pretty awesome inside of cinema. Um, as for the, uh, the actual camera tag, nothing really crazy going on here. Uh, in the actual camera imager, I have a look kind of based on the album cover, what's already made out of it, and kind of coloring to that, and everything here is pretty basic. Hot pixel removal, I, I kind of usually leave this at like 0.7 just to eliminate some fireflies, but you know, this is something that you would have to test um, on your own per scene circumstances. Um, right now I have path tracing 500,000, or <laughs> 500,000, oh god, no, 5,000 samples, that would be crazy. Um, 500,000 would be crazy. Uh, 10 and 10 are my depths. Uh, GI clamp 1. Uh, I do have an alpha channel, not keeping the environment on, and everything's pretty normal. Okay, just want to show you guys my basic rundown of settings. Okay, so environment's completely black. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, I guess the, the uh, this would be a good time to go ahead and open up HDR Light Studio, and it, we can go ahead and just turn off this group here. Uh, you can see if I turn that on and off, uh, there's just a little bit that I had to come in and uh, kind of clean up, I guess you could say, or just kind of uh, rope off some of these lights. Um, so let's go ahead and start this connection for HDR Light Studio. 
And uh, this really is going to be kind of difficult to keep on the same screen, but I'll do the best that I can. Um, there we go. We just lost that. Okay. <laughs> so let's kind of rope this in here to the side. And we don't really need this middle panel so much so we can look at our light properties. And um, I'm not going to go through every single one of these lights because oh, that would take forever. This video would go on super long. But I'm going to walk you through like why I did some of the things that I did. Okay, so starting out with a gradient background, I actually added this later just to give me some uh, more overall top illumination or just kind of frontal illumination as you see here. Uh, it was something that I just added later. I started out with just a simple light um, just uh, for Guy. If you look at the actual album reference, and uh, you know you're familiar with the album cover artwork. There's this huge like hot spot that hits uh, Guy's shield, or, um, yeah, his shield. And if you look at the settings here, it's just a I believe I used an Uber light, which is down here. Um, and then once you add that Uber light, uh, you can see my brightness is cranked up just because it's uh, shooting out a lot of high dynamic range values into the scene. So um, coming over here, sorry, I'm trying to create some room so we can look at this opacity ramp. This is kind of the magic of using HDR Light Studio uh, because you can have like a really intense center here. And if you're familiar with HDR Light, um, or I'm sorry, high dynamic range um, imagery, you know, you're just familiar with how these values work. You can have a really, really intense kind of core and then rope that off and kind of fade it as the light fades away from the center here and that creates this really hot kind of ping and um, this is what gives you kind of realistic uh, reflections and everything you know you could we could make this more dramatic and probably get a, a little better result or see that a little more clear but you kind of want this to kind of uh, fall off kind of like that so you can get the ping okay so that's really um, very important uh, to getting great looking uh, accurate looking reflections in your models Okay, so everything else is pretty normal here. Uh, let's go ahead and, uh, well, I should mention the whole light paint fe feature. So uh, let's mess around with this for a little bit. If I, if I say I want to use this in reflection mode, I can actually come over here with this uh, light selected and click on the model and I can say where that reflection needs to go. So that is extremely helpful for blocking out lighting. Um, and of course, I can go ahead and step backwards and we're back to where we were so let's keep going up the list I have a side light here um, so I'm just blocking out the major reflections um, you know nothing crazy just blocking out what I know um, those lighting positions need to be using the light the light paint feature it's so easy just to place lights um, and then we have like a rim kind of coming from the top on uh, Thomas's side uh, we have this kind of flag, which the flag is just a, um, I believe I use the gradient light. Probably use the dark light maybe to create flags with, but I just use this gradient light and then just uh, turn the values all the way to black. Okay, the alpha ramp, this is just talking about alpha, not color information. So, um, And then you can see I just put it to over and uh, put it into position and you can see this is uh, this is kind of our canvas building right here and that's the light blocking the top light okay so again the light paint makes this extremely extremely fast to, to place these and then you can tweak here in the settings okay so I have this kind of low rim uh, for Thomas just to kind of block out his cheek area you know I'm just trying to uh, create interesting shapes here with my lights light painting <laughs> right we're painting with light, literally, and we're trying to just bring out the volumes uh, here. So I have this key light, which kind of hits both of them. And in post, I'm actually eliminating this on Guy's shield uh, just so we can create an interesting look, kind of basing it off the album artwork. Now we're kind of blocking out Guy's side. Um, so we have the brightness levels, and of course, we're still using that opacity ramp uh, to create this kind of gradient look here on the shader and I'm going to show you the shaders uh, because they're not super complex but they're interesting enough to talk about uh, to add in different variations of color and you can see here it's really starting to come together as I add this other key light um, let me just turn this on and off just so you can see where that's coming from 
okay? So that's kind of just falling and hitting this shape, and it's reflecting it in the shield, uh, which, again, um, you know, post is great for just being able to take what you want and cut out what you don't need. Okay, so here's a lower side rim. You can see I'm just kind of blocking in uh, some more light here, kind of getting this, like, gradation of, like, uh, bright to... Uh, cutting this off dramatically and then bringing this up and piping this up again like really bright and um, just creating some in interesting uh, gradation of tone across this model that's all we're really trying to achieve um, and then I have this key light for uh, Thomas uh, let me turn this off and on again you can see that this really kind of brings out his uh, his mouth here and just illuminates most of his shape Okay, and then I just have another bottom light. Let me turn this on and off so you can see. Okay, so nothing too crazy. Uh, let me go ahead and turn off my info. Uh, if you just right-click in the viewport and then toggle info. Okay, here's the bottom light again. Okay, so filling out, blocking out this shape. I want this to be clear. I want these forms, uh, these rigid forms, to be very clear and evident on this model. Okay, all this, all this work that uh, has been modified on this mesh we want that to show up we want it to be very clear and we want this form to read as clear as possible okay so just trying to achieve that is easier said than done right like it takes a lot of time to kind of um, think about why this looks so good and like how we can recreate it in CG I mean obviously the album artwork like we have that as a reference to go off of but like, you know, even as an artist, you want to try to improve on what was already made there and uh, trying to nail the likeness. So it's kind of difficult, but it's a lot of fun. I absolutely love doing it. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to stop the connection. OK, and if we look at our HDR light now, we should just be oh, we're still looking at the temp file here. So what I'm going to do is just navigate to the actual EXR file that we shot out from um, that we actually shot out from. HDR Light Studio, so just one moment. Okay, so now Octane, the environment, even though this is the connection, is looking at an actual file that is in our um, directory for our project. Okay, so looking pretty good. I just bumped up the power a little bit. Uh, this 0.25 uh, rotation is something that comes along with the connection in HDR Light Studio, and uh, nothing here is uh, crazy. So. Let's go ahead and take a look at the shaders real quick. Uh, so the actual process of this project just kind of give you a 30,000 foot kind of elevation to see how this all came together. Um, I just create like really simple shaders. Um, I know that there is some kind of metallic features to these masks just because they um, are very reflective um, just from looking at the uh, album artwork but you know that they're probably not wearing like metal on their head so you're kind of thinking like in your mind like how, what kind of material is this is it a dielectric is it a conductor and it's a little bit of both so that's how I approached making these shaders you can see here I have a plastic shader and then I literally have a metal shader here and I'm trying to find the best of both worlds so with Thomas it's pretty simple um, I color picked a um, not too bright not too dark color from the image and then, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the roughness is 0.1, so it's pretty shiny, but again, uh, not too shiny. We want to try to um, have this fall off here on the shader where it's really blurry, and then it gets like pingy and sharp, and that's where the metallic's going to help us out. So 0.1, um, and then we have 1.8 or so to create kind of a plastic look for this um, shader. Uh, let's step over to the metal. We have no diffuse color because it is a conductor. It's pretty much all specular color. And uh, the roughness, again, is low. I have a fall-off map here just so I can kind of adjust, um, you know, the values from 0.15 down to 0, um, which, you know, isn't really physically correct. Having, like, absolutely a perfect surface isn't really physically correct. Um, but then I'm using the fall off to kind of um, rope that in and try to get the look I want. And with Octane having this power and flexibility and stepping through multiple layers of shaders and making tweaks, um, it's it's hard, I know, as a viewer probably um, to see why I was doing the things I, I do. But like um, I try to give you the mindset so that you can kind of recreate that um, yourself and uh, even improve on this scene. So 
here is the index of four, so not in, in super bright. Remember, this index is uh, a value that um, tells us how bright, or sorry, how shiny this surface is uh, from the uh, forward facing to the glancing angles. Okay, so this is a, uh, it relates to how reflective those surfaces are, um, just as a quick note. Then we use this mix shader to block out the metal and the plastic and how those are actually going to fall across the surface. And of course we're using a fall off map. So um, the preview here helps a lot, but obviously me tweaking this value to arrive at 1.49 is something that I just had to see. Once I had my lights blocked in, I was going back and tweaking that um, to get that direction of fall off from the lights. Okay. And from the, uh, the response from the materials. Okay, so that's pretty simple on Thomas's. Uh, again, I just want to rehash this. It's a mixture of a conductor and a dielectric, and I'm trying to uh, blend this reflection uh, from the surface. Okay, so nothing super physically accurate. This is kind of artistically driven, and the numbers are just something that I had to arrive at from um, just playing around with them. Okay. All right, so let's step over to guys. Um, obviously, this is a little bit more complex uh, just because I wanted to get all of these colors and tones and having the fall off uh, from those different colors be pretty sharp, and um, I wanted to be able to control all of that. So um, let's just, <coughs> excuse me, let's start out with the plastic. Um, so with the plastic, I'm just using a, um, a kind of base color, if you will to kind of get the overall orangey and yellow inside of his mask, okay? So it's leaning way more red than I thought it was. Um, but that's just kind of like this base tone that you barely see through um, on some of these uh, glancing kind of parts right here, down here. Um, a lot of it's the metal, too, that's coming through. So uh, then I'm kind of roping off the, uh, the color to not be so reflective. This is kind of like the base layer. And 1.7 is what I'm using here. Okay, so uh, if we look at this first mix material, this is going to be a mix between this plastic and uh, this metal right here. So just to confirm that, yes, you can see guy metal mat and guy plastic mat, and that's where they're going right here. So let's step through the metal. Again, this is just going to be almost exactly like uh, Thomas's. So we're using a, um, a really orangey color to uh, um, pick up some of the reflection. And then we're uh, a high index value, and we're mixing with a fall off map that has been tweaked. Okay, so uh, let's look at what this looks like on Guy's mask. If I just drag this over and drop it, um, so this is what I arrived at. And in my thought process, I'm like, oh, okay, well, we're getting some orange, we're getting some yellows, we're getting some deep browns. But I'm not still seeing, um, if you look at the album artwork, I'm not seeing that brightly intense yellow that should appear on some of these um, some of these facing angles and stuff. So I could maybe try to do this with a, a gradient or try to mix it with a fall off, but it's just so fast and easy just to create another level of a mixed material. Okay, And I'm just going to have this top shiny level to bring out the yellows in the forward facing uh, faces right there. Okay, so let's look at that really quick and you can almost see it from the preview. Uh, you can see that top shiny coat right here that's coming through and then the edges will be the points that I really like about this being this angle right here. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Please leave any uh, comments in the comment section below if you have any question about that because um, it's really hard to explain, but hopefully me just dragging this onto the helmet will illustrate that. Okay, so I'm still retaining what the shader was doing in this portion, but then I'm getting the yellow kind of shining through uh, on these forward facing angles. Okay, and these are the normals and the, uh, the angles that are facing the camera. I'm trying to pump this specular color into that and having a fall off here with the light placement. Okay, just to see the index, it's very reflective. But I'm using the fall off to just choke that so I can only get the parts that I want to show up. Okay, so I hope I explained that well enough. But again, just leave a, um, 
a comment in the comment section and I can get back to you about um, specific questions. Okay, so let's step through um, what this madness is that I'm setting up, okay? Okay, so flags. Um, like I said, I, I flagged most of this in um, HDR Light Studio to make these uh, sharp reflections and cut the lights off. But um, I'm using flags like extremely close to the model just so that I can eliminate as much reflection on these helmets as possible. Okay, so let me hide it. See all this reflection here that's on the, on the helmets? Unhide it. We're cutting that off just from black uh, shaders. And this is just uh, a diffuse black, you know, it's very, very basic. There's nothing there that's special at all. And um, we're just flagging it. We're giving it a octane uh, object tag just so we can hide it from the camera, as you can see here. Okay, so they're literally right in front of the objects. This is a great thing about CG is that you can kind of get away with whatever um, you need to do. <laughs> you can kind of place these these things very close to the object and, and not upset anything else. So um, with this flag here, uh, this is creating a dark reflection on, across this, this uh, portion of the light. It's kind of uh, accentuating the light, if you will. But I wanted this to be like extremely black, like as black as this is right here. Um, the reason this is not happening is because this mask has a little bit of that plastic in there. So you're getting a lot of diffuse color and you're not getting 100% uh, reflection. So to show you that, let's look at the, the diffuse um, the diffuse input here. So this is the indirect illumination. You can see Thomas has a lot more and you can see here it's very clear that there's a lot of diffuse color and uh, pretty much guy is almost all reflective because it, it appears more metallic but uh, Thomas has a has a, um, a mixture of diffuse color and reflection so you can see the flags here okay but um, they don't show up super black because it has a lot of plastic mixed into that shader. So to get around that, we're going to look at in post how we can just draw on some black uh, lines to just make that look exactly like the album artwork was, which uh, I don't even know if the album artwork was CG or if it was painted or if it was a combination of the two, but you know, the artwork is super awesome. So um, these flags are just there to create some more uh, black kind of reflections okay so I I won't uh, harp on this any longer <laughs> you guys can just download the scene and check it out for yourself it'll be on Gumroad uh, I also have octane lights here to just pump in some more color okay so the one that is pretty important is uh, this one right here okay so it's called uh, guy chin light and this is creating this ping and illumination and this is what gives it this amazing kind of gradation here um, it makes it look really cool. So what I'm using is a image texture. And if you were to view this in Photoshop, you would see that the center is really bright. And then it's just kind of blurry as it reaches the edges. It's almost exactly how we were looking at the HDR light studio with the opacity ramps. It's the same idea. Only I have it on an octane light and it's actually floating in 3D space and it's not on an actual uh, textured environment. Okay. So that allows me to come through and create some really awesome pingy surfaces using that um, texture and the light. Okay, so this guy right here, the ear light, it's going to give us some kind of um, really hot pinginess on the ear. And then you get this awesome kind of gradation of tone across guy's mask. And uh, last but not least, we have these illumination planes. Okay, so I have... Um, some of these planes here just to give some more interesting reflections in the environment. And the only thing this is, um, if we look at this one that has the purple that goes on Guy's mask, if you go to the emission channel, it's a texture emission, it's color corrected, and it's kind of set to the hue of purple, and it's a huge saturation boost. And this is from Maxime's um, uh, HDR pack. So if you don't have this, you should definitely have it. This is, of course, the interior pack. He has an exterior pack, and then he has a free pack. Just if you weren't convinced by me saying that these are some of the greatest HDRs, I use them like in every project almost um, just to throw in and block light. 
and he has these like vertical lights that are on the ceiling in this environment and it helped me create this kind of stretchiness and I just use a, a different kind of cubic mapping to kind of compress that image and get some more streaks and repeat that pattern um, to get that on his helmet. Also here, this is another illumination plane. So um, you can see here it's reflecting into the side of Thomas's mouth or chin or whatever you want to say. So this gives us some more interesting reflections from the environment. And this was something that was like the icing on the cake. This was the tertiary kind of setup, um, you know. So again, just to kind of recap, uh, HDR Light Studio blocked out a lot of the forms for me and got some of the reflections I wanted. And then coming back into Octane, I was able to use flags, Octane lights and illumination planes to kind of finish out the actual lighting setup for the model. Okay, so this is something that we're gonna look at inside of Fusion. So let's go ahead and jump into Fusion and I'm gonna show you really quick some basic color correction um, tweaks and how we finished out the image. Okay, so here we are in Fusion and this is my basic uh, node tree here. Um, it's very, very simple. The only thing here, it, what we're doing, again, I'll just try to give you an overview. We're taking the, the actual render passes we're brushing them through some uh, color correction. So we have like masks here to be able to color correct specific parts. Um, we get in some uh, custom masks here uh, with this polygon node going into the mask for the color correction. And then these guys here are like the black shapes that are blocking out and creating the kind of um, artistic look. Uh, some more hot spots to provide some blooms. Um, and then blurring some more um, dark mask and stuff. So let's look at it. Uh, I'll stop kind of <laughs> just chatting about it. And we're going to view this in the second viewer here. So again, I rendered this out at 4096 by 4096. And uh, let's just step through these nodes. So this is a basic render from Octane. This is just uh, some slight tweaking. So I'll keep this, this render from Octane up on the left viewer. This is just some slight tweaking for uh, Thomas's shield right here. So you can see we get some blues and the highlights. It's pretty sweet. Um, I have it set to highlights, just pumped up the gain and adjusted some of the saturation, tinted it blue. Very simple and easy and cool to get that looking correct. Um, some more color correction, ramping down the highlights, giving more of a blue feel for Thomas's side. Okay, so then we have a hot spot here. Very cool looking. Just gives some more pinginess and bright illumination like that light is super hot. And then uh, some more color correction. Okay, if we look at this polygon right here, um, it's just on his mask. On the, So uh, look at the mouth here, and I'll step back. And then looking at the mouth, that should give us a little bit more illumination there. There we go. You can see I turned it off, on. Okay. So um, then we have this merge node with all of this black shapes. Okay, so I'm just merging all of these different um, polygon shapes. Okay, so there's one there on the corner. They're all over the place. Um, let me grab this guy. Okay, here's the side of the mask. Up here, you can see the shape that I drew right there. Um, so let's turn that on, see what it looks like. Very cool. So it adds a background and then it gives like this, um, those black shapes that I drew over top of the image to kind of really set that up and bring it out. And I can control the blurriness of all of it just from one node. So how cool is that, that I have everything here? Um, it makes it ex extremely easy to set this up. I can blur each individual ones if I need to. And then they're just being merged all together. So make sure in your polygon uh, in your polygon nodes, if you go over to image, this is set to the actual image of the canvas and that way they'll line up correctly. That's kind of a gotcha moment. Um, and then I have uh, basically this Boolean channel to uh, set the alpha to black and reverse it because um, if you don't, they'll just be white. Okay, so I'm reversing it here in the channels, channel Booleans by setting this a negative. Blurring it some more and then merging it. Okay, so let's step forward. We got some more cool hot spots here um, Again, these settings are just tweaked to my likeness 
um, or to my likeni- liking, <laughs> not my likeness, my liking. Um, and then we have some more polygon um, masks here to kind of rope out the shape and everything. So you can see this one if I step over to the image. I don't have this set up to be a custom output size. Somehow I got this working. Um, but basically what that will do is um, kind of block out all of that extra reflections on his mask. You can see I can really get this looking super black. If you look down here in this uh, bottom left, you can see the RGB values. So they're not super black. Well, there that's almost completely 100% black. There's still some color in there though. Um, let's step forward. Let's bring some more colors up with the color correction. And then um, this is just a little bit more um, color on his actual gold part, okay? It's very slight. I don't even know if you'll see that in the screen cap or not. And then we need to resize it just because I have the free version of Fusion, which you should have the free version of Fusion as well, um, because why not? <laughs> have it on your computer and you can kind of walk through this. You can uh, look at my Fusion file uh, because I love Fusion, but I don't have the actual um, version. Uh, I think it's like $1,000 for the professional version. So I have to use this resize node to squeeze it down so that I can actually shoot it out into a PNG. So this is the final look of the image. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Check this scene file out on Gumroad. And if you feel the need to buy me a cup of coffee, um, I drink a lot of coffee, so <laughs> I would appreciate that. But thanks a lot, guys. It's been a lot of fun kind of setting this up and trying to think of a project that would have some kind of advanced lighting techniques, if you will, in it. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you'd like to see a specific tutorial, I love requests. I love to hear what you guys want to do and what you want to see. So I really appreciate you, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.